Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to a new project. This one is a Philips. This is actually just the chassis of a phonograph unit that uh, a friend of a friend of mine owns. So, um, why am I doing this? Why do I choose certain projects and not others? Well, this one has got a uh, stereo output. So that's the first thing that's different. This thing is Philips, so it's still a European model, but um, it's really very, very different to the uh, normal German models that I do, the Grundix, the Sabers, and so on, especially different to the Sabers. They're all different to the Saber. Uh, the Sabers are far more complex than anything you'll see on, uh, from that era, but it's a Philips, so they do things slightly differently. You, you look at a Philips radio, not at the schematic itself. The schematics are generally very, very similar with a few quirks, but the construction itself, the build itself, is actually very different. They, you look at it and you, you recognize it immediately as, you might not recognize it as a Philips, but you'll recognize it immediately as different to the German ones. And I find that interesting. The other thing I find interesting is this thing has got a dual amp. They call it the bi -ampli. Uh, dual amplification and that means it's actually got two output transformers as opposed to having some of that pseudo stereo that you sometimes get this has got two output transformers two output tubes there are the usual EL84 output tubes but the dual output transformers makes it a lot cleaner as a power amplifier if you want to use it to feed audio through the uh, gramophone input this is a lot simpler a lot cleaner it keeps the stereo more separate as it were. Now this thing has one other peculiarity which is very very common on radios uh, in Portugal and especially in Madeira. It does not have FM. It's got medium wave and four short wave bands and the short wave bands go all the way from about 1.6 megahertz which is where the broadcast band or the medium wave ends all the way to 26 point something megahertz. I'm just looking at the dial here so um, it could actually go a bit further. So it goes basically all the way to the top of the shortwave band. It's got one other thing I like, which is the band spread for shortwave. You can actually fine tune once you're on a, 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 an area of the band and you can fine tune around that with a separate knob. So it makes it a lot easier to um, zone in and tune in onto a station. And that's something that some of the, even some of the really good radios that I've done haven't got, like the Saba Breisgau. It's got no band spread. So when it comes to tuning on shortwave, you've got to be very, very meticulous. And sometimes you don't get it, especially with stations that are very close together. This one, you get to the general area and you can tune a little bit left, a little bit right, and it makes it easier to do that. But more importantly for, for this particular radio and this particular person who, who owns it, is they want to have Bluetooth adapted to it. So with Bluetooth, Bluetooth adaptation, you basically are using a Bluetooth module that receives your signal from your iPhone, your MP3 player, whatever's got Bluetooth, and it then feeds it into the gramophone input of these radios. So you select gramophone and you feed your Bluetooth signal through that. With this particular radio, I'm quite confident that it's going to be very, very good because of the two separate output transformers for stereo. This thing's got speakers inside the console, so there's a sort of a, a tag strip, like a plug-in strip, that is outside, that uh, when you put it into the console, your speaker wires get plugged in there. That same socket connector thing has got two for the gramophone power, which I'm going to disable because the gramophone that this thing's got is just going to be cleaned up and left there as basically decoration. It's not going to be used at all. So this is, well, I mentioned a couple of things that I'm interested in that make this interesting. And that is really why I take on projects. I'll take on a project if there's something different about it, if there's something that, um, that I like about it. Now, I've done a Philips bi -ampli before. I uh, can't remember the model number, but it's on my website, it's on my channel. And I really found it interesting that, um, especially noticing the differences between it and the German con uh, uh, counterparts, and I'm hoping this thing will be interesting as well. The other thing I find interesting about this one is the condition it's in, the visual condition it's in. It looks a total mess. And when something looks this bad, the change can look really good. I mean, if you take a before and after, something that looks like this, which is all full of 
it's all ground up and black and brown and, and, and dusty everywhere. And you start cleaning this millimeter by millimeter. When you get to the end, it's amazing. The transformation is amazing. It's like a makeover. And I really enjoy that difference. You know, if you get a radio that's looking like it's new, then what you're going to do is change a few caps and maybe do some, some alignment. But it's not to say that's not interesting, but when you've done a lot of these, it does get a bit monotonous. So I do try and look for something that's different for my own interest. That's what I'm doing this for. This is my hobby and I'm logging it for anybody who's interested in, in following. So I try and find something that really uh, basically perks me up and gives me a reason to do it, not just another radio. This is a hobby for me. Um, there's no way, there's no way that I could make this a business. It's just the number of hours that you spend on these things, you'd never be able to charge a decent wage if it was a wage. There's just no way. So it's got to be something that really stimulates me. And the other thing is, you know, I get I get quite a, a lot of choice. This is a very small island. It's 270,000 people. Um, so there aren't that many uh, tube pieces of tube equipment around. There's enough, but there aren't, you know, as much as you'd have in a big city or places where some of you guys come from. However, there's also not many people who do this. So generally I can choose, you know, somebody will find out that I do this sort of thing through a friend or a friend or a friend. And sometimes it's four, four lengths down the line and they'll ask me if I want to do it. And I want to sort of ask myself, why would I do it? Now, there are other people who do it. I've seen some amazing stuff. It's just not something that they do for fun. They do it as a job. So they try and get this thing working as quickly as possible, which on these radios is a mistake. When you try and get a tube radio to just work, you haven't done a tenth of the work that needs doing. Because if you just switch it on, leave it on, and you haven't done a lot of the maintenance work, changing stuff that's going to blow up or burn out or heat up, you are creating a trap. And it can be very, very dangerous. I'm yakking too much. This is what I do. This is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to basically see if I can get this thing done pretty quickly. Um, the Bluetooth module you've seen me put in before, but I might, I might go into that. But if I find some of the interesting differences worth mentioning, I will just record that and we can uh, follow that as well. So let's have a look at the radio in more detail and see how we're going to go from here. I did remove the glass front faceplate from the radio because I wanted to make sure that I didn't damage this thing in putting it into the, the stand and everything else. So here it is just for us to look at it. What do we have here? We've got, it says there, bi -ampli radio. We've got our uh, volume control on the side. We've got our tone. This is the bass and that'll be treble over there. We've also got the bands, medium wave, short wave, four, three, two, one, going up to 20 six on the dial but it will go a bit further and the medium wave starts there at 500 and something 550 there so slightly below that so we've got the full medium wave and then we've got as i mentioned we've got the uh, band spread for the various um, shortwave bands you can use the band spread on the shortwave it says there shortwave dash oc oc stands for shortwave in portuguese on the curta so this was obviously made for the Portuguese market as well. You very seldom get the Portuguese terms here. It's got off, a pagada, which is off, uh, recorded, what does that say? Record, recorded phono, strange. Medium wave dash OM on the media, that's medium wave, short wave four, OC on the curta, and so on. And then of course, on the other end, you would have the tuning. So if we take this away, that's what we're left with. And Here's where things get fairly interesting. Um, I've removed this cover. Normally with the uh, German radios, you'd have a face, uh, a metal cover there. These guys are using a very, well, it's pretty flimsy actually, with the two dial lamps on there. And this cover is then stretched between these hooks over here. It's a bit of a strange situation, but the hooks fit on there and stretch it. So we'll put that aside. The one thing I noticed about this is it's got no holding system for the glass. It actually fits in through these rubber grommets and it's very, very difficult to remove. You've got to basically squeeze these grommets in and then the glass pops out. If you're not careful, it can very, very easily break it, very easily. 
The other thing this thing is different in that is that you can actually see all the mechanisms here in a way that is not normal on the um, on the German sets. So it is actually easier to to maintain, which is a good thing. Again, this this face looks different. It's like a different anatomy. <laughs> it's it's like being a, a surgeon, and now suddenly you've got a different species in front of you, and uh, you've got to figure out where all the organs are. So uh, it makes it a little bit more interesting for me. But again, all the, the push buttons are here. There's another dial lamp in there. There's two dial lamps in there. I have not turned this on, so I'm not sure what, what we're going to find here. But if, let's look at the top. This thing looks like a real, real mess. And as I mentioned, this is why I love it. Because when you clean this up, it's going to look great. We've got our transformer, power transformer over here. Again, layout is completely different to what you normally find on the German set. Tuning capacitor there. Three gangs on here. Not sure why, but we'll find out. This thing is the uh, wire that connects the antenna inside the cabinet itself. You've got the magic eye, which I've bolted to the top here. You've got these switches, stereo mono, which uh, fit to the front of the console. So that's got to fly around here for a while. There's another little light on here. We've got this thing, which is the ferrite antenna rotator. And this thing, uh, that thing there sticks out the back of the console and you can adjust it a little bit, not too much. There's obviously something that's broken off here. This is one of the wires that goes to the to one of the co uh, coils on the ferrite antenna that's broken off. So I'm gonna got to try and find continuity, continuity there and solder it in. And then, um, here we have all the inductors and capacitors for trimming and so on and the IF transformers and everything else. Again, they look different. It seems to be... Oh, here's one, here's the other. Those IF transformers look completely different to what we're used to. This one is double shielded. Um, this is just a little screw on there, so that should be quite easy to tune. But what you can see here is everything is sort of grey-black. This looks like it's come from a mining town, a coal mining town. It's just gray black everywhere. The grime on this thing is amazing, which means that the cleanup will be amazing. I look at this now and this is not immediately recognizable in terms of tube layout. You know, one of these will be the mix oscillator, the ECH81. The other one's going to be an IF uh, amplifier. I think this is probably the ECH81, the mix oscillator. It'll be right at the front. Uh, that'll probably be, oh, I don't know. That should be the IF transform, uh, IF amplifier probably an EF89. There, those two there are the two EL84s and that'll be driver one, driver two, I think. One of these will be the uh, detector. So, as I said, we're going to have to look at this thing a little bit more closely and figure out what it is we're looking at. But as far as I'm concerned, the main attraction of this radio is the dual output transformer. They're nice and neat. They're at the back here. Some of these caps these Philip capacitors, waxed and tar bound things, are terrible. Terrible. There's the pulley system for the tuning. Now, the, the main tuning is the usual thing. It spins the flywheel and it does the tuning capacitor. This fine tuning is that thing there going into there. And it looks like a... I think what you're doing is you're actually um, adjusting the position of a, an inductor in there. So this will be permeability tuned. Basically, it's an inductor and you are moving the core of it up and down to do uh, to change the frequency of oscillation of the um, of the tank circuit. So that'll be uh, permeability tuned, I'm sure. And it's really interesting how this thing is done as a the front the indicator for the uh, band spread is moving at the front here as I as I speak again it's different it's different let's look at the underside okay starting from the front we've got our um, piano keys over here this arrangement is pretty normal but again all the mechanics of it are pretty accessible and you can see the movement through here you can actually see the switches and so I would imagine it'll be a lot easier to clean a few of those dog bone capacitors here, which probably don't need changing, but anything that is a Phillips tar capacitor will have to go. I don't see anything on here. There are a few ceramics on here as well. Now these ceramics, these uh, domino type things, generally are pretty good. I'm hoping these are as well. 
But anyway, whatever I need changing here, it's actually pretty accessible, which is a good thing. I didn't mention this. This has got an uh, EZ81 a rectifier tube that goes on here. That's your antenna and ground. There's the voltage selector, 220, not 240. The power transformer it seems to have heated up quite a bit, unless that's just the tar. Uh, this here would be the inputs and your speaker outputs on that end over here. Okay, what else do we have here? A few electrolytics on this end, right at the end here. That'll probably be cathode bypass capacitors. There's a few, there are a few electrolytics there. What I've noticed is that some of these caps, I'm not sure which era this is from, but it doesn't use a lot of those uh, really bad Phillips capacitors. This has got those mustard, mustardy ones here. Those are hit and miss. I've had some that are pretty good and some that are bloody awful. So I'll have to check those. As I said, I, I don't see much in terms of the caps that are really, really bad. There are a couple of uh, electrolytics down here as well. These will probably be cathode bypass, not the ones I mentioned. These capacitors here, these are the filter capacitors, and they will probably be pretty dead by now. So this doesn't look bad at all. It's very accessible. It's pretty clean on the underside, which is contrary to what we find on the top. Shouldn't be too bad at all. The major task here is cleaning it up and then fitting the Bluetooth will be quite easy, I think. Again, I hope. First thing I'm going to do is a quick transformer test, make sure the transformers are fine. I've got the speaker connected to one of the speaker connectors here. This is this one here because it's yellow and gray. The other one is green and black. So that's the other transformer. And I know that this one is being fed by this power tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a signal from the signal generator across the output of or the, the anode of the uh, what would be the EL84. In other words, I'm going to put a signal across the primary of this output transformer and see if we can hear something there. I've got a one kilohertz signal, one volt uh, RMS from the signal generator. There's no power to the radio, so let's see. The anode is pin seven, so nine, eight, seven. And we can hear it, perfect. Let me try the other one. So that output transformer is fine. We'll try this one. And we'll go to this anode, 987. Yeah, it's working. We can hear it. What you're basically doing is you're putting a small signal, a one volt RMS signal uh, at an audible tone across the primary of this transformer. And of course, the secondary goes to your speaker. So that's what you're hearing. And it's low level, so you can hear it quite well. So these two output transformers seem to be fine. We now need to just test the power transformer, make sure that that is OK to determine whether this thing is a viable restoration. And there are a lot of ways of doing this, but what I'm going to do here is what you shouldn't do. I'm going to power it up. Because this thing has got an easy 81 uh, rectifier, I'm just going to remove the rectifier. And if I look at the schematic, I know that the uh, secondary of the transformer is going to pins 1 and 7 of the easy 81 the, power, the rectifier uh, tube. So I've just made a little hookup for this so that I don't risk getting a shock or creating a short inside there. I'm going to leave this thing connected. Now the dim bulb tester is got all the lights off except one. So it's a 40 watt light bulb limits on safety is on. So I'm just going to hit it. Let's see what happens. And then we'll go look at the meter. Well, huh, dial lights have come on. This thing's drawing 120 milliamps. I've got one, two, two dial lamps on. Seems like quite a bit of current, doesn't it? Considering there's no draw whatsoever. But if I give it another one, 160 milliamps at 200 volts. So this thing is limiting a little bit, but I'm getting 200 volts. Let's go look at the meter. Let's switch it on. 290. Perfect. We don't know if it's too high, too low, whatever, but at least the transformer is working. The dial lamps are working so that the heater, heater voltages are also working. 
and actually the heat most of the tubes are in there except the obviously the easy uh, 81 and the I've taken out the two power tubes so a lot of that current's got to do with the heaters that these tubes are getting but at least there's no short on the heaters because otherwise we'd see something on the dim bulb tester but you see 290 volts halfway so this across those two you'll have nearly 600 volts as you can see here we basically have this circuit coming in here the primary goes through the switch so the switch is working and then we've got we measured there the secondary uh, center tap goes to ground so I measured from ground to pin 1 and then I measured from ground to pin 7 and I've got 290 each so this thing is high voltage once again this is a wake-up call you've got to be very very careful with these things if you don't know what you're doing don't mess with them this thing's got an isolation transformer blah 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 dim bulb tester but it's still extremely dangerous these voltages are very very high you know across one secondary you've got 300 volts but if you take take it across the two you're in for a shock so i think this thing is just let's see where's the switch and the switch is working so we've got the main components working we've got the two output transformers working apparently the power transformer seems to be working dial lamps are working the tubes we don't know but at least the heaters aren't shorted and um yeah i think we've got a viable restoration to do here also very few actual capacitors real bad capacitors that need changing we do have two across here those two definitely have to go but this is um yeah this is a cleanup job this is a real intensive cleanup job let's see how we get along Here she is all cleaned up or as cleaned up as she's going to be the obvious uh, changes are the piano keys i love it when these things come out clean that one there that uh, tone control is still drying there's a, a bit that was chipped off that i glued on so i haven't put that on the mono and stereo switch these things came out fantastically now the front has been washed that screen or that shield or whatever you call it is actually a plastic so you can actually just wash it with water knobs have been cleaned they weren't too bad and then of course the major change is here now this might look like it's still dirty but it's actually tarnished it's the metal itself that's tarnished so that is as it's going to be but um I'm sure you agree the difference is quite amazing I've done a lot of uh, other cleaning there'll be little bits and pieces that I'll need to clean like some of the wires might um, still need another go around but I've lubricated all the pulleys I've actually um, lubricated the pots and the well yeah the tone control pot volume pot everything that's movable has been lubricated not too much but just enough 
There is still that broken connector over there. I haven't done that. The only thing I've done in terms of components are those two caps at the top, which I think you might have seen me do one on the uh, <laughs> zip through of cleaning. That thing, um, those are across the, the transformer. They're sort of a um, network that uh, prevents oscillation. And they were 1500 uh, volt caps. So I've used these, which are 1000 volts. The reason these things are so high is because the voltage on the uh, transformer actually gets much, much higher than the B plus of the radio. This has got to do with the fact that you're dealing with an inductor and the, the voltage swings can be very, very high. So that's been changed there. Over here, nothing was changed. And you'll notice the filter capacitors are still there. But those I have changed on the underside and I'll show you. I decided to put these on the underside because there is so much space. Now those two over there are the first two filter caps. These are 450 volt caps, 47 microfarads each to replace the dual can that was in there. And I've actually uh, removed the contacts so that the old capacitor is completely removed. And here there's one on the underside there and one that actually goes to a tag point, which was connected to the uh, capacitor anyway. So the four filter caps, this thing uses four 50 microfarad filter caps. Those have all been replaced. And other than that, I have seen no capacitors that uh, need changing. This thing uses uh, ECC83, in other words, the 12AX7. Um, uh, there's one and there's the other. So two 12AX7s and the one section of each drives the, uh, the EL84 and the uh, coupling cap is actually, let's see if you can see that. You see that big stick over there? The one that says 22K? That's the uh, coupling cap. It's one of those dog bone ones. So even that is not a paper cap or a, you know, one of those old crappy ones. So, um, I'm getting this thing ready to, to, to actually do a test of the radio function and power it up. I'm going to go probably audio first, just feed in a, a signal, but I need to study this a bit more, make sure that I'm feeding it in the right place. Just a little bit more studying required here. And then the speaker connectors are easy because I've actually just cleaned up the contacts on there. And that's already prepared. So this thing's coming along quite well, especially because there doesn't seem to be much in terms of uh, bad capacitors. But I'm happy with it. And uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, cut it off for now. This video is getting very, very long. This has been quite a while in cleaning. It doesn't look like it, but it's been a hell of a lot of cleaning. And when you look at it like this, it all sort of seems to have happened very fast, but it hasn't. So uh, I'm going to leave for now and um, do a bit more checking, make sure that it's safe to power on. And then the next video, I'll power it on, test the audio and then see if we've got radio. This thing should be ready to go. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And I'll see you back for another video very, very soon. Bye for now. Stay safe.